All right, what's going on, guys? Hope you all are doing well. So, Halo Infinite has a very strong variety of weapons. A lot of them returning from older Halo games in the past, but a lot of brand new ones that specifically make their debut in Halo Infinite. And today, we're going to be looking at all of the different kinds of weapons in this game and ranking every single one from worst to best. We're going to be talking about how a lot of the weapons work mechanically, what sort of game modes and situations they're useful in, and depending on what kind of player you are, what sorts of weapons you should gravitate towards if possible. That's super important to keep in mind, although we are are going to be ranking these amongst each other. Halo has always had pretty good weapon balance to begin with, so to a degree, ranking these from worst to best is going to be somewhat subjective, and of course, you guys feel free to let me know your weapon rankings down below in the comments. Regardless, we're going to be ranking every weapon in Halo Infinite from worst to best, and I hope you guys do enjoy. If you do, make sure to drop a like rating on the video. It would help out tremendously. If you're new to the channel and would like more Halo content, please remember to subscribe. We're pretty much on the brink of half a million subscribers, which is absolutely insane, so thank you very much, but anyways, let's get into it. Now, literally no weapon in Halo is inherently bad, but for a lot of practical uses, coming in at the worst spot on this list, I'm gonna have to say is the Disruptor. So, I really like this weapon mechanically, and it has really interesting properties where it can chain to other people and basically prevent shields from recharging. You can also shoot people a handful of times, walk away, and if they're low enough HP, it will just continue to deal damage over time, and you can sort of escape a gunfight and still get the kill without putting yourself in danger, which is an unbelievable privilege. I guess my only only real problem with the Disruptor is it doesn't have just any real impressive time to kill up front, and if you don't pair it with anything else, once shields are down to finish off the kill, it's not going to really do a whole lot. Like, if you only have a Disruptor and no other weapon, you really won't be doing a ton of damage without somebody or some other weapon to follow it up with. I guess I'd have to best classify the Disruptor weapon as kind of a support gun, I suppose. That being said, it's still, like, phenomenal for the very specific job that it can do, but just on its own compared to other guns you could pair it with, I don't think it really Really stands on its own two feet but that being said it is a very fun weapon but not incredible in my opinion anyways coming up next on our list is going to be the stalker rifle and to be honest this is a weapon i actively avoid like it does have the potential to be absolutely dangerous however in most cases if you happen to miss any shots it's literally so easy to punish possibly the easiest to punish whiffed weapon in the entire game to be honest i don't really get killed by this weapon all that often whether in quick play or in big team battle modes i don't see it on the battlefield very often it's it's not a particularly popular weapon, and I'm sure there are going to be some fans of it that really see the potential in it, and it's definitely one of those things where you can be very solid with it, but in my opinion, not worth the risk. So anyways, coming up next is still what I would say is going to be a lower tier weapon, but is in no way, shape, or form bad. This is the Sentinel Beam, one of the very unique forerunner weapons in Infinite, and to be honest, this is actually one of the more special ones, as it has a property that allows you to fight multiple enemies at once, which a lot of weapons in this game simply cannot do. You got to focus on one target at a time. The Sentinel Beam doesn't have anything super impressive as far as time to kill. However, it does fire a constant beam that basically at any range can be controlled with moderation. The recoil isn't too bad, but sometimes can be jarring or unexpected. At least as far as infinite goes, I've always felt like this weapon doesn't have enough ammo. Like, you definitely have to make sure it doesn't overheat as you're using it, but as far as its base ammunition, I feel like it could do with a little more because of the type of weapon that it is. Even though I don't think it's amazing, I feel like this is a great weapon to start playing Halo with, especially new players, to get sort of familiar with how the gunplay and recoil mechanics work. I don't think the Sentinel Beam is a bad idea at all just to familiarize yourself with it. Also, just like many weapons, a fantastic weapon to pair with something else that's long range and precise as well. Coming up just above that, still on our lower tier, but getting into our medium tier weapons, this is going to be the Pulse Carbine, and I think this is significantly more effective in smaller maps. If you're playing this on either ranked or just in quick play in smaller matches, and specifically specifically not big team battle, although it can work there. The Pulse Carbine is the best when paired with something else, particularly a bullet weapon. The plasma beams come out of this so slowly, you can almost react to them from a long range. I think if the travel time was a lot faster, this would be a better weapon, but as it does eat through shields, you're kind of forced to use it up close, and even then, there's better options for taking down shields in that kind of scenario. Keeping it real, not a big Pulse Carbine kind of guy, and I don't think I ever will be got its uses for sure, but it has a ton of weaknesses as well. Coming up just after that is going to be a weapon I quite like, actually. This is the Heat Wave, and this has a ton of different uses that can be applied, whether in big team battle or playing, like, quick play in smaller sort of arenas. Now, this literally has the ability to change fire modes that are more cut out for, like, one-on-one -on -one situations, or you can have a horizontal spread that may ricochet the bullets to hit multiple enemies. Specifically, if you're fighting in small rooms over, like, objectives, this can be very dangerous. It can deal 
deal actually ridiculous amounts of damage when utilized properly. It is one of the more difficult weapons to use optimally in game and because of its different fire modes and also just the way the projectiles move and everything, it's not as straightforward as you might imagine just picking up the gun to begin with, but after a little bit of playtime, you'll know, start to know exactly how this weapon behaves and is used in the best possible manner. Side note, it's surprisingly decent against vehicles as well, so not a bad call for that either. So coming up next and getting into our true mid-tier of weapons, starting off we have the Plasma Pistol. So this has a couple properties that I feel like make this have a higher skill ceiling and a better like overall capacity than the Pulse Carbine, for example. Now the Plasma Pistol can be charged and with a fully charged shot will immediately take down shields paired with a you know regular bullet weapon and you can absolutely demolish people. You really don't want to be caught just shooting single shots at people and expect that to do the trick or get the job done. You really want to do this technique where you can run around the map and then charge the plasma pistol before letting go of a shot swap to your other weapon and keep doing that until somebody does enter your line of sight or you can realistically hit them uh, as they do approach you and then you can finish off the kill with whatever bullet weapon you have. An AR is a really good choice in this case but generally speaking the plasma pistol can either be the best weapon or literally the worst weapon. It all comes down to how it's utilized and also just the engagements that you find yourself in. A little bit less effective in big team battle matches I would say because the plasma travels so slowly it's easy to react to or avoid but if you're able to hit somebody and you completely take down their shields you've basically already won the fight. It may not look like anything too special but the plasma pistol is actually decent in Halo Infinite. Coming up just after that is going to be the commando rifle. Very mid-tier weapon in my opinion and I want to like this gun so much more. Ideally I want this to be like a high tier or even maybe a top tier weapon in Halo Infinite but I just feel like you have to work so incredibly hard for the, basically the results you do get. Getting multiple headshots in a row doesn't feel as rewarding or they don't seem to die as fast as they should with this kind of weapon. It's hard to put my finger on it but it, I, I really feel like I know it's Halo but the time to kill for this specific weapon in the game is a little bit too slow. And maybe not by much but only a little bit makes a huge difference and it really puts me off to this weapon a lot of the time. I'd rather just run the regular AR because I feel like you, you if you have your pistol you basically have a commando. It's good but not great. I could definitely see this weapon getting buffed in a future update. Coming up just after that is the standard regular combat AR. This is literally just the go-to what you're going to spawn in with basically every game unless you're playing ranked obviously and this is one of those guns obviously it's not like a shred machine but you better get familiar with it because you're going to be using it a lot for sure. Now the reason I'm placing the combat AR above the commando is I, I feel like this just has the king of consistency. The commando doesn't feel as consistent as it needs to for me to rank it higher even though technically speaking it is a bit more specialized than this. You really just can't beat the classic at the end of the day. In fact you can almost use the weapons in the same manner and a lot of the times just the regular combat AR will literally beat the commando so a weapon I literally can't rank any lower than this and it's very good. Anyways coming up after that is like still a medium but definitely higher tier weapon. This is the Ravager and although I admit just like in its objective speaking form it is very good of a weapon I'm just not in love with it. Maybe I don't use it enough to really get the full like potential out of it. It can be charged and you can absolutely decimate things including vehicles but I don't know I'm just not particularly a huge fan of the Ravager even though I know it has the potential to be absolutely ridiculous. It's fairly rare to come across and it doesn't have a lot of practical uses in my opinion in a lot of Halo matches so it's fine but again not in love with it. But coming up after that we have the shock rifle. I'm actually surprisingly a big fan of this gun. It's very similar to the disruptors effects where if a target that you're shooting is in vicinity to their teammates it will also deal damage to them. So maybe not the best in terms of individual gunfights but when shooting groups of people specifically in big team battle when there's a lot more engagements that could be close range or have multiple enemies at once the shock rifle is going to deal ridiculous damage and it does have that one shot headshot capacity as well. Honestly I have a lot of success pairing the shock rifle just with the regular combat AR or if not using a BR alongside this is like a very deadly duo. Another thing I notice is because you can see the entire shock of where like the beam literally goes it can actually help you sort of align your shot a little bit better if targets are farther away or at like a different elevation it's a weird visual thing but it seems to help me a bunch I don't know why anyways moving on next might be sort of a surprising one but this is just going to be the standard regular marine pistol now this is very similar to the combat AR in the sense that you need to get comfortable with this gun because you're going to spawn with it literally every life and again maybe doesn't have the same raw killing power as a lot of the weapons but it can be used to start fights it can be used to end fights and if you just specifically headshot people with this and are good at landing them you can fight people at virtually any range and have a very good
good time to kill overall. Pistol is probably the number one weapon you want to put time with and get good at as it's the most important one to master. It makes a good pair to basically any weapon in the entire game and you definitely don't want to sleep on it just because it is a sidearm or a pistol. I had to rank it this high just because of its very practical utility but overall it is a solid weapon. So coming up after that and moving into our high tier of weapons this one's going to be the skewer and when Halo Infinite came out to be honest with you I didn't like this gun really at all. It was just because I didn't have enough playtime with it. I didn't really understand how it worked and now that I've had a little bit more time to play around with it and get a feel for the gun it's probably one of my favorite weapons in the game. It fires a fast moving projectile that you needs to be compensated for to some degree but can absolutely demolish vehicles in a single shot and instantly one shots anybody who will get hit by it. The problem is reload time is really nothing to write home about. It's so easy to get punished if you miss a shot or if you're playing against somebody who is using a skewer and they miss you have a huge window of time to punish that before they can reload again but it's a very dangerous weapon to go up against if especially if somebody sort of knows how to utilize it and has a good shot. Generally, the Skewer went from being one of my least favorite weapons in the game to probably the one that's the most sought after for me anyways in most matches. Seems to be most effective in big team battle if you ask me when you have a lot of targets, but either way you use it, it is phenomenal. Now, coming in just above that is the Bulldog Shotgun, and I gotta be honest, I do prefer the old like Halo 3 shotgun to this one, although I understand why they made the change they did. I do wish the Classic Shotgun returned in some capacity. The Bulldog basically is the same in terms of effect effectiveness and like just how it works mechanically you can still do the tried and true one shot into melee for an easy kill i don't have really many complaints other than that about the shotgun in this game and it's a fairly easy weapon to get your hands on depending on if you know where it is in the map it's way less effective in big team battle if you ask me because generally the engagements you're going to be in are a little bit more farther range and you have to pair this with something that is capable of precision you don't want to really pair this with a combat ar in my opinion either a pistol or a br is probably going to be your best bet or even some sort of plasma weapon to take down shields and then finish it off with a shotgun on face value there's really nothing else in the game that is as effective in specifically close range as the shotgun that's literally what it's made for of course and if you ask me it's probably one of the most fun weapons in the game in halo infinite so just after that we have the hydra rocket launcher and this one's got some great properties as well particularly heat seeking missiles that will lock onto your enemy so long as they're like in your hud and in your crosshairs now the cool thing is this will target both individual enemies and also vehicles you really want one of these as far as support uh, in big team battle modes when the enemy is like rushing down with I uh, like warthogs or anything in the air it's not as devastatingly powerful as some of the other launchers that you have access to in infinite but it's probably the easiest one and more practical one to at least put into play in individual gunfights with a hydra you most likely won't lose and against vehicles so long as you have like a decent amount of cover or high ground you can also take them out with absolute ease. Biggest downside to the Hydra is it's probably got the worst reload in the game, or definitely one of the worst. If you miss all of your shots in the Hydra, you're going to get punished if you don't have a secondary weapon. So it's pretty difficult to replace ammo for, so you want to use them sparingly if possible, unless you're planning on trading it out. But good luck replacing it. You may only get it like maybe one to two times a match, but it's certainly worth picking up if you have the ability to. So coming in just after that might be a bit of a surprise one, but I'm going to say the Needler is actually a very top tier weapon in infant now the way it works is you need to be very close range to your enemy and if you put enough needles into them which have a sort of auto tracking mechanic they will instantly explode the problem with the needler is it's basically entirely useless at a distance as the longer distance the needles need to travel the more likely that they'll either hit the ground or hit some obstacle you can kind of react to the needles too depending on the range you can classify this as kind of like an all or nothing weapon you need to land almost all of the needles to get a kill or if you don't land any you're barely going to do any damage whatsoever so it's very committal I would say and you need to pair it with something like a BR or an AR in my opinion but otherwise the needler is a ton of fun regardless now getting into our very top tier of weapons this one is is gonna have to go to the mangler and surprisingly a weapon that I didn't expect to like in infinite but now is easily one of my favorites so the mangler is basically I would say just like almost like a magnum or very high powered single shot pistol and more or less that is a minimum three shot to kill at full shields and that might sound like a lot considering its fire rate isn't anything too crazy but if you're able to land shots at a range consistently like it, it will kill faster than almost anything you can think of however I think the biggest strength to 
to the mangler is the fact that you can fight multiple enemies and multiple engagements over an extended fight and you really won't have to run out of ammo or reload too often if it's three shots per kill you can take on realistically two or three enemies without having to be worried about ammo same cannot be said for a lot of other guns in the game you pretty much have to spend an entire magazine fighting one enemy and then you have to reload before your next engagement coming after that still in our top tier is the gravity hammer again a halo classic and for the most part behaves almost exactly as it has in the past an absolute unit of a weapon and it's great for particularly one-on-one -on -one gunfights maybe even multiple close range engagements and also vehicles in halo infinite gravity hammer creates a shockwave in front of you which will deal damage with a diminishing return the longer the range is but anywhere up close will one shot enemies and also definitely got a bit of a hefty wind up time but if you account for that or compensate for it you won't have any trouble in close range engagements you'll pretty much never lose them unless you put it away you also can run out of ammo however so be mindful of that too so just after that is a power weapon i don't have too much to say about this is going to be the cinder shot it's probably one of the most precise like launchers or you know the sort of these area of effect weapons that you can get and it's surprisingly amazing in big team battle and for no wonder every single time it spawns it's going to be highly contested in the battlefield but it demolishes armor it's great on one-on-one -on -one gunfights and it handles vehicles like an absolute dream you really don't want to be playing against it so if you see a cinder shot spawn be sure you and your team either lock it down or at least contest it because it's super important coming up next is one of the highest tier weapons in halo infinite and if you're playing ranked is the number one weapon you need to learn this is the br and this is basically the number one king of consistency if you want to be almost unkillable in halo infinite this is the weapon to get good at and if you can land headshots once you break people's shields and are like on the ball with staying on track and hitting headshots you're basically unkillable like it's it's not even a joke cool thing is because of its functionality it can be used in close range engagements to land you know these very devastating headshots but also at a range it doesn't have that much kick where it makes it unusable you do need something in my opinion to break shields quickly so it's very well when paired with like a plasma pistol or possibly even a pulse carbine some sort of thing that will delete shields but definitely worth getting good at the br it's one of the best guns in the game but climbing almost to the top of our list here we have the spanker or otherwise the classic halo launcher that even if you've just watched gameplay of halo in the past you've most likely encountered this weapon before now in halo infinite it's completely necessary to control this weapon if you're going to win games straight up it's just going to basically give you one kill or more per rocket it's probably one of the most sheer devastatingly powerful weapons in the game you don't have a lot of ammo to work with and that's definitely its biggest downside you won't be able to replace it all at all until like another one spawns in so use it wisely but if your team can control this you can absolutely lock down like control objective or simply intimidate your enemy once they know you have it they're going to play a lot more scared than they otherwise would but it's a fantastic and so much fun of a weapon in halo so coming in at the number two spot is just going to be the classic standard regular marine s7 sniper rifle now it does not have any other like interesting properties such as like the shock rifle that will you know deplete shields or prevent them from recharging simply a ballistic style of weapon that has just a devastating amount of damage and that of course that one shot headshot capacity it's one of those weapons if you've played halo in the past you'll probably already have and retain the muscle memory of how to use the sniper in halo infinite even though they're technically maybe a little bit different they're going to function the same it can be surprisingly scary in close range and possibly even beat out a shotgun if you can land a headshot first and simply how contested it is in game should give you a good indicator on how effective the weapon actually is definitely one of my favorite guns in the game top one fun gun ever so coming today at the number one spot i am going to give this one to the energy sword now specifically in halo infinite fun fact there are two different kinds of energy swords there is the standard just regular straight up energy sword and then there's the duelist one and it appears that the duelist energy sword is objectively a little bit better than the original because it's got a little bit less like end lag or like recoil downtime after swinging the weapon now it's a very minor change and it also looks visually a little bit different it's somewhat darker but it's not a huge change overall whether you're using the duelist energy sword or just the standard one you're going to be an absolute fiend in close range and it's a, a lot less like cumbersome and committal than the gravity hammer also when you're coming at somebody with an energy sword they tend to panic and attempt to run away but because you have very quick movement speed with this you can usually run them down or catch them it's also very good to be paired with either maybe a combat ar a pistol and also active camo is great with an energy sword as you don't have to move a ton or at least sprint with the energy sword so you can have like the maximum concealment and just sneak up on people and assassinate them so much fun the energy sword is easily probably the best weapon in the game so anyways ladies and gentlemen that is going to be my full official ranking of every weapon in halo infinite from 
worst to best. Now, as we are basically still in the beginning of the season of Halo Infinite, technically the multiplayer is still in beta. We're going to continue to get updates as the year goes on, and this list may evolve and change, so definitely make sure to check back in and see if there's anything new added or if any of my rankings change, which I'm sure they will due to balance patches or just otherwise subjective changes. Let me know what you guys thought of my list down below in the comment section, and if you did enjoy the video, it took me a long time to put this together, so I would really appreciate a thumbs up if you haven't done already. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more Halo content, of course, remember to subscribe before you go, and I also do stream over on Twitch if you guys want to catch me and come hang out. Link to that's in the description. I stream a variety of things. Great place to come hang out, so I'd love to see you over there, but anyways, thank you guys very much for your time. I appreciate you watching if you made it this far, and I will see you all in the next stream or the next video. Have a good one, and peace out.